guys on Zoom, good morning to those watching the YouTube recording. Let us worship God together. We begin with some words uh, from Psalm 96. Some words from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his marvellous deeds. For great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Well, we're going to do that today, this morning, and uh, we're, first of all, we've got uh, three songs. Um, and uh, we've got Come Down to Come to Worship, Happy Day, and O Church of God, Arise. Uh, thank you so much. But let's stand and sing.
Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for those words that we have been singing, that we are your gathered people. We are your church. We are part of the body of Christ. And you have called us from all different places and all different backgrounds and nations and nationalities and cultures. And you have drawn us together through faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come this morning, we bring to you our worship through him, who made the way possible through that great high priest. And we come to the throne of grace. Thanking you, Lord, that we can come finding mercy and help in our time of need. And we are always in need of you, O oh God. And so we worship you and we praise you for your greatness, your majesty, your power, your glory, your compassion, your holiness, your righteousness, your justice. You are all wise, all powerful, and all loving. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we worship you this morning. We pray for your blessing upon our service today. We ask for a sense of your presence here in this sanctuary, and for those on Zoom and those watching on YouTube. And we also, Father, at this point, commit into your hands those uh, from the fellowship who are uh, away, abroad, on holiday, or visiting family. Please bless them and keep them safe. We ask for your you are a holy God, and we thank you that you are uh, one who is uh, pure and righteous. And so often, Lord, we sin against heaven and against you, and we are not worthy, we feel, uh, to be called your children. But we thank you for forgiveness, freely available through the cross. And so we pray for cleansing in Jesus' blood, and we thank you for that promise that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. We take hold of that promise and we pray for the descent of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to this building, to our hearts on Zoom and YouTube. If ever that's possible, I suppose, we pray for a great feeling and sense of your presence. And we pray that you will speak to us through your word, that you will hear our prayers, that you will speak to us, accept our worship, and that you will meet with us as we meet together with you and with one another. We pray that we might, above all this morning, encounter you and that everything that happens here today might glorify your most holy name. We pray, Lord, that all that goes on here today and in the coming week may uh, align with what's written on that stone outside the front door, that to the glory of God and uh, that all people might come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand in the game and sing, Strength Will Rise. Strength Will Rise.
get out our Bible reading now. Sister Jill is going to come and do that for us. joined the believers that day. The believers studied what the apostles taught. They shared their lives together. They ate and prayed together. Everyone was amazed at what God was doing. They were amazed when the apostles performed many wonders and signs. All the believers were together. They shared everything they had. They sold property and other things they owned. They gave to anyone who needed something. Every day they met together in the temple courtyard. They ate meals together in their homes. Their hearts were glad and sincere. They praised God. They were respected by all the people. Every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Thank you, Jill. Children are now going to leave for Sunday school. Uh, let's pray for them briefly. Dear Father, we uh, commit the children and young people into your hands. Bless them, may they find Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, as so many of us did in Sunday school. And we pray, giving thanks for those who are going to be uh, teaching and looking after the children and lasers, young people, during that time. Please bless and protect them all, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now Brian's going to bring the notices. Next Sunday, it's the Bride London event, and obviously the road outside will be closed for all traffic apart from motor, apart from motor <laughs> cycles. And but the church will be open. We will be having our normal service. So those of you who get here or walk here, we'd love to see you. Otherwise, it will be recorded on the Zoom and other messages too. So we will be having our service next week, and Andrew will be leading that. If anyone would like to see or read a copy of the church minutes of the church meeting held um, earlier this month, then please see me afterwards and I can let you see a copy uh, of what we decided there. And I would ask that you make sure you book Saturday the 16th of July for the church barbecue. Um, more details will be given as we get near the time, but just make sure you book that date so we can have a, a good time with the whole fellowship together uh, around that barbecue and other events also. I have a, a notice for the gentleman. Gentleman. <laughs> so that's caught your attention, that's the idea, you see. Um, for next Saturday, the 28th of May, um, we ask that you might meet at Monkham's at 9 o'clock, and then you're going to have a leisurely walk in the brilliant sunshine to the Toby Carvery at Buckers Hill, where at 10 o'clock you're going to have breakfast. And you haven't got to cook it yourselves, it will go there for you. And then, uh, uh, and after that, you can walk back home until, until you've done something and been energetic, that'd be really good. But if you can't do the walk, then please, if you're able to, meet the, the, the team at the Carberry at 10 o'clock. So don't forget that for the men. Just to say about next Sunday, um, if anybody wants to park at a little distance and walk, some of you who live at quite a distance, um, Brother Robin has said that, um, Got, is it three parking spaces? It was three, yeah. Uh, um, three parking spaces. If you did want to park at, at Robin's and uh, speak to him about that, uh, if you wanted to park and then walk a little distance here. 
Thank you for your prayers for last week. Caroline and I and Zach had a lovely time at Baptist Assembly. And I've come back with some magazines that I've been given to give to you all. And uh, so I'll be handing those out later, the latest uh, Baptist Union magazine, which has uh, got some really interesting articles about what's going on, what God is doing in different places of this country here today. We are going to take up our offering now, and while we do that, we're going to uh, have a song, but we are going to, uh, well, I don't think most of us would know this song, it's called Build Your Church. I just want to explain, I've chosen this video because it really blessed me. It's full of young people, well, by young people, I mean people in their early 20s, younger than me, and um, singing this song is by Innovation Worship, Build Your Church, and I, I very much feel this needs to be our prayer today, not today, but in, in these days, these days when we are gathering back together, we are recovering from COVID, and so we're going to watch this video, those who take up the offering can uh, take it up, bring it down here, and then when the video is finished, we will uh, pray for the offering and, and for the church together. So let's uh, uh, watch that video, uh, stewards will wait on us for our offering, and if you want to sing along, if you want to stand, quite frankly, if you want to dance, it doesn't bother me at all.
Father, we thank you for that song and for those young people singing that song. We pray that that will come to pass here, Lord, that you will build your church. It is your church, not mine or ours, but it is your church. And we ask that you will continue to build your church in this period of time that we are in, of COVID recovery. Lord, we pray uh, one day before too much longer we might be in a position to have a live worship band again. Lord, we pray that you will add to our uh, fellowship people from all backgrounds and generations, but we pray particularly for more young people of the age that we saw there on the screen. And we ask, Lord, that somehow, by your spirit, you will light the blue touch paper to bring this about, Lord. We uh, ask uh, for your help in this matter. We pray for the spiritual and numerical growth uh, of our fellowship. We know that these two things must go together. And so we pray for this in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, the gates of hell will not prevail whatever Satan plans against us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are the head of your church. We bring before you these tithes and gifts and offerings and pray that you'll bless them for the work of the kingdom of God in this place and beyond. We thank you, Lord, for your hand upon us in this area of giving for what you give to us. We thereby give back to you. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, we have another video now, not um, uh, not a worship song. Uh, today, uh, my subject is church membership, and um, just to bring a slightly different perspective, um, I've got a video by a brother called Trip Lee. Now, Trip Lee is a, a, a youth pastor in America. He's also a rapper as well, and he brings uh, uh, via the agency called the Gospel Coalition some thoughts, just for a couple of minutes, on church membership, and then we'll come again to prayer. So, thank you. Eve. One of the tough things about church membership, we sort of talk about if it's necessary or not, and, uh, is it really something we have to do or not? One of the hard things is we're not gonna find the phrase church membership in the Bible. We do see the word member, we're talking about being members of, of the body of Christ. Uh, but I think the way that I, I'm constantly trying to explain it at our church and when I talk about this, membership is a, it's a phrase we use that summarizes some relationships that we're called to in scripture when it comes to the church family. So we know that Paul is writing to specific churches. When he talks about loving one another, he's talking about loving one another in those churches. So the first thing is, it's assumed that these people are members of a particular church, he's writing to them. But the thing is, scripture calls us to the individual Christian uh, to have a particular relationship with elders, to submit to those elders, right? To sit under the teaching of those elders, to love those elders, to pray for those elders. And then those pastors have a relationship to that individual Christian. They're called to uh, serve them, to teach them, to protect them, right? To, to show them uh, the glory of God's word. Uh, and there's a relationship there that we're called to in scripture. Not only that, the individual Christian to the other Christians in the congregation, right? They're called to uh, commit to them, to submit to them. And these Christians are called to love them, right? To bear one another's burdens, to, to teach and admonish one another, to bear with the idle and the faint-hearted and the weak. And then that whole congregation has a relationship to those pastors, where um, the pastors begin to teach that whole congregation. That congregation is to uh, uh, hold that pastor accountable, to sit under his teaching, to submit to him. And there are all these relationships and these commands that happen within these relationships within a local church that point to a kind of commitment, a kind of submission, a kind of love for one another. And the phrase church membership is a phrase that's used to summarize those commands. And because those commands are absolutely necessary, God has called us to them. We can't submit to all pastors everywhere. We can't, you know, bear every single person's burdens because those are commands given to specific communities. Yes, church membership is necessary. Um, and necessary not in the sense that you can't be a Christian if you're not already connected to a church, but God has called us to these particular kinds of commitments, those commands. So anytime I talk to a Christian, I don't, uh, my, my main goal is to show them the beauty of church membership uh, and what scripture says about our commitment uh, to one another. Okay, let's pray together. Our 
Father in heaven, we thank you that uh, we are able to bring our prayers and intercessions before your throne. And there are so many, many things that we pray and could pray about, and a lot of things that we are concerned about as individuals and as a fellowship of your people. Dear Lord, we bring before you, first of all, the situation with the war in Ukraine. And Father, we ask that you'll bring it to an end. Somehow, Lord, we pray for peace, and we ask that you will turn the hearts of those involved in this, Lord, particularly on the Russian side, but in fact on all sides, that this might come to a conclusion, and that you would uh, not let it escalate uh, further beyond the borders of Ukraine in, in so far as it already has. Father, we bring before you what the media are calling the cost of living crisis, every one of us can see the prices going up and the concern and the impact upon us as individuals and upon the poorest of our society. Lord, we ask that wisdom might be given to the government in this country to uh, steward things in a way that protects the vulnerable and corrects the problems in our economy. We pray, Lord, for uh, their wisdom and we also pray for uh, particularly if we are asked to in scripture for those in authority, by Her Majesty the Queen, the Prime Minister, government ministers and those in Parliament. And Father, we bring to you our concern about moral standards in public life and how we are grieved at what we see in the news with the standards of people uh, from, from Parliament, government and police and other things. God, have mercy upon us as a country. And send revival, we ask. And we pray that you will send more Christians to these high places of the land, to these uh, areas of authority, that the standards might be raised. And we pray for a move of your spirit, right from the uh, top to the bottom of this land of the United Kingdom. And we pray indeed, giving thanks that although uh, Christianity seems to be in decline in the West, this is not the case everywhere in your world. So we pray, Lord, for the move of your spirit, such as we see in some parts of the world to come to the Western world. We pray for those in the fellowship who are unwell at this time. We also pray for those who are struggling with various difficulties, whether they are known or unknown. We pray for your blessing upon those who use the building, our hirers, Woodford and Wanstead Migrant Support, Play and Learn Nursery, Parkinson's Group, and all who seek to use our building in these days. May each one have a sense of your presence when they are present here. And now, Heavenly Father, as we come to look at your word together, we ask for your blessing upon us. We thank you that the ministry of your Holy Spirit is one in part of illumination. And we pray that the Holy Spirit might be at work in our hearts as we study your word and this whole subject together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Amen. 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 Now, uh, Eva, thank you for operating the Zoom today. And if you could go to the PowerPoint, I'd be very grateful. So, today, church membership, is it for me? Church membership, is it for me? Today we're looking at the subject of church membership, and uh, we're going to be looking at that passage from Acts 2 together presently. But immediately, some people might be thinking, well, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Do names on a list really matter? that much to God and to Christian discipleship. <clears throat> Isn't this church membership this thing just a funny eccentric way that Baptists do things? Well, I hope to answer those questions this morning and in the process show how church membership is important, biblically. Hear me now, it's not just the new pastor having a membership drive to impress the deacons or a denomination, okay? And today, as with Believers Baptism a couple of weeks ago, I suppose I declare an amnesty. 
If you are not a church member, but you could be, well, now's your chance. Okay? Now's your chance. Now, in today's culture, today's culture is called postmodern. We can post postmodern now. Um, people are a bit wary of joining stuff, joining things. It's not just church. Uh, you, you speak to political parties, community associations, golf clubs, bowls clubs, uh, this sort of thing. They'll tell you all the same thing, and membership's not what it was. And postmodern generations prefer projects rather than organisations, relationships rather than institutions, and that's a good thing, I think. But also it sometimes means they are, prefer short-term enthusiasm to long-term commitment. And we see that in all areas of society, like marriage, don't we, for example. Mark Lever said that all the statistics seem to point to our age being an age of commitment phobia. Commitment phobia is the fear that in promising to do something good, we're missing out on something better. And so although we might see good things we can be doing, we try to just keep our options open, really. And there is wisdom in that, although I think that's probably the wisdom of our age, actually. Now these shifts in culture and the way that things are have taken place in the last few decades, and they're not all bad, not all bad, because it means that we're more interested, for example, in the vision and mission of the local church that we're going to, rather than what label is above the door, because we're post-institutional. Where it is not good is we live in now a consumer society with adverts and whatnot. And we view ourselves as consumers or customers. And so that affects how we do in church sometimes. I've spoken before about supermarket Christianity, what I call it. Um, another friend of mine calls it butterfly spirituality, where people flit about, not really committing to any one place, any period of time. We're like that with supermarkets. We spent a few months going to Aldi, a few months in Lidl, Asda, possibly Sainsbury's. We've not made it to Waitrose yet. Um, but you see, this is the, the, the environment in which we live our Christian lives, and we have to be different. So church membership in 21st century Britain in the West is, is countercultural, actually, to a certain extent, countercultural. But Baptists recognise that the New Testament emphasises the importance of committed relationships, and that we are called to express it for our faith in a community of love. That's why Baptists think church membership is important. And to be honest, the phrase church membership is not really, I mean, if covenant belonging might be a better phrase to know, covenant belonging. So, Jill went to us, Acts, um, uh, Acts 2, 42 to 47, and I've uh, sort of summarised this as the qualities of a healthy church. Just like when we looked at Believer's Baptism, we're going back to the Book of Acts, to the early church in all its uh, spiritual vitality. In Acts chapter 2, right after Pentecost, when the church, uh, God was moving, we find the passage that I've uh, had read to us today, we find what I think are ten qualities of a healthy church. First of all, baptism. Those who accepted this message were baptised. Second of all, conversions. Those who accepted his message, who acted on the message and were saved. Thirdly, teaching and preaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And they also devoted themselves to fellowship. And to the breaking of bread or communion. And to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe. The fear of the Lord was upon them. And everyone had everything in common and shared with those who are in need. We had given and sharing. And then they continued to meet together. There was commitment. Continued to meet together in verse 46. And everyone worshipped and praised God. Those are the ten things that are, are qualities, if you want, of a healthy church. And there's a sermon in that, in and of itself, really. And I suppose, in a way, we're looking at number nine today, commitment. But really more, wanted you to look at verse 47 of our passage. Because verse 47 of uh, the passage that Jill read to us, Acts 2, 47, I just want to draw your attention to one word in there. Ver Acts 2, verse 47, And the Lord added. And the Lord added. 
That word for added in the Greek means to put together for a purpose, to gather. We are gathered people to add up, to lay down, to set down beside. And this points to what God does. God adds to the church. God saves us. God brings us together. We are uh, made born again, converted. We become Christians. And in this sense, in that sense, all Christians are church members. We all belong to the body of Christ family of God but we have a responsibility to respond to that to respond and, and later on we will look at another Greek word which is used I think for church membership which is our response to being added to the church spiritually so here we go what is church membership what is church membership? Well, Christians, as I just said, are saved in one sense to any members of the church. We express our faith in different ways, don't we? Like attending worship, receiving fellowship, a pastoral care in home groups, prayer meetings, serving in the various activities of the church. Every Christian who is taking an active part in the life of Broadmead, as far as they are able, already belongs to the church. But, but, as well as a spiritual entity, Broadmead Baptist Church is of necessity also a human organisation and a legal entity. And for these purposes, this church, like all other Baptist churches, is obliged to have a formal list of members. In church business and in, in church, when we refer to members, that's what we mean. That's the group of people that I mean when I say church members. Now, some of you may be aware of this, and some of you may not, but in Baptist churches, important decisions are not made by the minister or deacons alone, but by the whole church meeting, the church members meeting. So church members meeting decides a number of things, important things in the life of the church, and only active Christians who are committed to the church can share in this decision-making process. And so all Baptist churches operate a membership list. Leaders of church activities can only be appointed from among the people who are on the membership list. Why is that? Why is that? Well, it's because only those members have legal authority to act on behalf of the church. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, I see, it. it's like being a member of the RNC, the AA, or, oh, I don't know, the, the local uh, club, or social club. And, and yes and no, yes and no. Uh, it's a bit more than that actually, because membership of organisations and clubs and, and sort of things is, is a bit of a remote meaning. Being a church member is more like being a family member, or a member of an orchestra, or a member of a, a, a football team. It's about participation, it's about discerning. It's about uh, uh, discerning the mind of Jesus on the way forward for the church. Baptist churches have what uh, theologians call a regenerate church membership. It's those who have been saved and have not been, have been baptised by immersion. And those people can be members. You may think, well, I, I'm not really a Baptist, really. Well, it's not about becoming a Baptist. It's about committing to one local place of worship. Why be a church member? Why bother? Isn't this just kind of an eccentric, funny way that Baptists do things? And isn't it an unbiblical tradition, an unnecessary formality? As I said, does it really matter? Well, not in terms of your salvation, no. And you won't find, as the brother said earlier, you won't find church membership as a phrase in the Bible. But then you won't find the Trinity in there in the Bible as a phrase either. That doesn't mean it's not biblical. Church membership is biblical. It's talked about implicitly in the Bible. It's implied, it's not explicitly described. So many things in the book of Acts, for example, and other passages in the New Testament, only make sense in the context of their having been an official member. Now, our membership list. Now, I, I said that we've come to another Greek word that I think describes church membership. And here we are, we're still in Acts, and we'll move forward a little bit because I want us to turn to Acts 5.13. It is our response to what God has done by saving us, and that word in the English is join. Join, okay? We find it in two places 
And so I want to draw your attention to in Acts. The first one is Acts 5 and verse 13. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. This is after Ananias and Sapphira and, the, and what happened to them. The people had fear of the Lord, no one else dared join them. Again, after the conversion of the Apostle Paul, Acts 9 verse 26. Acts 9 verse 26, when he came to Jerusalem, Paul tried to join the disciples. He tried to join the disciples. Now the Greek word there is in various places in the New Testament. It literally means to glue, to cement together, to bond together, to unite, to join firmly. It is about cohesion, bonding, very close dependence. Evo stick have a a, a glue, uh, I think it's a mastic, called sticks like, whatever. That's that kind of idea. Sticks. Sticks, cement. And that's the closest the New Testament gets to church membership. A job joining word. It does not refer to an informal, merely assumed sort of relationship, where you choose, but one where you choose to join and glue yourself. Think of Paul in Acts 9. He tries to join the disciples. Well, it's not talking about public services of worship, which were open. He would not have been stopped from going to the preaching. He wanted to join them in a normal sense, in a formal sense. He wouldn't have been turned away from services if he was joining them as a group of people. So why be a church member? I've tried to show that it's biblical. There's a number of other reasons. We, we could be here all day, really, but I, I, I know we're limited on time. But I think the first reason is have a voice in the saying of running the church. Because every one of you is important. Everybody listening to this, everyone on Zoom, everybody uh, watching the YouTube, everybody has a voice, everybody has gifts, everybody uh, needs to have a say in the running of the church. That is a distinct, a Baptist distinctive, actually. It is, yes, to prove that you are not ashamed to publicly identify with Jesus and his people, same as baptism is. And it is also, I think, to show that you're not a freelance or lone ranger Christian, because we are called to community. We are called uh, to be individuals in community. That's what we are. In the West, I personally think we're far too individualistic. We're influenced by that consumerism that I spoke about earlier on. We hedge our bets, it's kind of our feet in two different camps, quite sure what we're going to do, but we are to be committed to one local cause. There's a, uh, an African, South African phrase called Ubuntu, which I've mentioned to you before. I have because we are a person is a person through other persons. Many of you understand this very, very well. This is what I'm coming to, that we are a person in relationship to other persons. We do so, become church members, to demonstrate our commitment to the working of each individual part of the body. It's an opportunity, you see, to grasp hold of each other with responsibility and love by identifying with the church. We let the leaders know that we intend to be committed and we assure the church of our commitment to serve and the church knows of its commitment to us and its commitment to pray for us. It is different. It is different to attending. What are the privileges and responsibilities to church membership? Some of you might be thinking, oh, this is where it gets heavy now. Um, no, no, no. Um, bear with me. You see, we're all citizens of a country here. Some of you have a privilege of being dual citizens. And as British citizens, we have certain rights and privileges, don't we? We can vote, we can work, we have recourse to public funds, NHS, social security. But we have responsibilities, don't we? We have responsibilities. To abide by the rule of law, to pay our taxes, to obey the rules of the road. That seems to have been forgotten in parts of London. Um, you know, rights and responsibilities. But because of what I've shared about the biblical nature of church membership, I believe it's one of the greatest privileges to have a blessing or smile of God on your life. And it comes because obedience brings blessing, just as I was saying about believers' baptism. It will bring you blessing. But more practically, it will mean a number of things. It will mean members are able to take part in members' meetings. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I 
don't want to take part in members' meetings. I've been to some awful members' meetings in the past, myself, and you know, we need to move away from this Victorian Edwardian business meeting style that some Baptists have been banned with. It's about us community together sending our way forward. Okay. It's not about point three of the constitution and all that. Although we do have to have a constitution. Members, you see, are able to play full a part in the life of the church. For example, if you're a member, you're able to serve as a deacon, and thereby using the gifts that God has given you to the full. To the full. By becoming members, we enter into a covenant relationship with our brothers and sisters, and we receive support and care and encouragement and nurture, and we come under pastoral oversight in the way that the scripture asks us to, with accountability and stability. Really, I say it, covenant belonging. It's about a sense of belonging. What are the responsibilities? Here it comes, you're thinking. Here it comes, what are the responsibilities? What do we have to do if we're members? Well, I reckon most of you are probably already doing some of this. This is what the Baptist Union described in their new church constitution, uh, known as the approved governing document. That we, God willing, will be adopted, I expect, in a year or two. But probably the constitution says very much the same. Responsibilities of membership normally include attending worship, participating in church activities, personal prayer and Bible study, participation in communion of the Lord's Supper as a privilege and priority, helping the church wherever possible, using the gifts and abilities to advance the purpose of the church through its activities, attending and participating in church members' meetings, giving regular financials, support to the church in proportion to personal resources and circumstances, and upholding Christian values. You see, it's not at the huge deal that some people make it out to be. It's just walking with the Lord. Now some of you might be thinking, well, wow, okay, does that mean if I'm a church member, I have to be here every single week, 52 weeks of the year, and I can never, ever visit another church? The answer to both questions is no, okay, as far as I'm concerned. We understand that people have to work on Sunday in this day and age. That sometimes people are unwell, sometimes people are on holiday, sometimes people have an obligation, a family obligation to visit someone else. What it does mean, I personally think, is that you would be uh, making this place your normal place of worship for the majority of Sundays and your own place of worship. So, and to become a church member, again, it's not as difficult as you might think. Normal way of entry into membership in the Baptist church is by baptism. That's the first way. Believer's baptism. I don't want to go through all that again. I spoke about that two weeks ago. Second way of doing it is by transfer. If you're a member of another Baptist church, we can have a letter of transfer from that church, and then we can welcome you in the communion. The third way of doing it is by application. Come and talk to me or one of the deacons, and then I'll visit you. We may do membership uh, course or classes, we may not, and then we will welcome you in the community once we've in, uh, spoken to the members, deacons and members meeting about it. Okay. How this applies to you. Look, I've got the so what question again. So what? So what? Well, pastor is going on about church membership. He's having a membership drive. Why is he doing that? Okay. We're all different in the time and energy that we are able to devote to church life. Because everybody's at a different stage of life. And everybody's situated differently. But every Christian who's taken an active part, as far as they're able, in the worship, fellowship and witness of Broadway belongs to this church. Even if your name's not on the list, and if you wonder if your name is on the list, the list is on the wall in the foyer. It's there because we had to have it up earlier in the year for deacons and nations. But even if your name isn't yet on the membership list, if you're not formally a member of a legal human organisation called Broadway Baptist Church, we do hope that you feel at home here, and if you're playing your part in the life of this church, you belong here. Now, as with any message, this is going to mean different things to different people. And I don't want any of you here, or listening to this, or thinking about this, to think that I've directed any of this to you individually. Because this is a corporate burden that I have to grow the membership of the church. But as far as I can tell, 
there are three groups of people that I would like to encourage today. And the first one is for those of you who are not on the Broadway Baptist Church membership list, but do consider Broadway your spiritual home. Why not consider it? There's some leaflets there on the table. Please take them, read them, pray about this. It might be that you're not too sure about this, and there might be good reasons for that. It might be fear or past hurt. Caroline and I can understand that. We really can. We've been treated very badly in some churches before, uh, past, past and afterwards, and uh, I've often been in a position where I thought, I don't ever want to be a member again. I can understand that. It may be you have personal preferences. This church is not quite what I'm looking for. Again, Caroline and I have been in that position before. We can understand that. We all have personal preferences of style and what we like and what we don't like. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not really a Baptist, etc. But God calls us to move beyond this, these things, beyond our past hurt, beyond our preferences, and to commit to one local church in membership. That's what I believe. I believe it is God's will. Uh, it can be God's will for everybody. So I'm asking you to think and pray about this, and I'm asking you, and I'm declaring an amnesty for you not to be embarrassed. Come and talk to me about it. Now, many of you might be thinking, well, I've never had that mentioned to me before, and I, I really, no one's asked me that before. Maybe you were feeling you're waiting to be asked. Well, I'm asking you now, aren't I? <laughs> Quite frankly, I'm asking you now, will you consider it? And I'm giving you a scripture that came to me, and, and this is happening a lot at the moment. I blame the person that um, prayed for the Holy Spirit to baptize me a few months ago. Uh, this is a scripture that came to me this morning. Numbers 10, and verse 29. Moses said to Hobab, We are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I'll give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. Some of you might know the authorised version says, Come down with us, and we will do thee good. We're in this COVID recovery phase. God is regathering us together. We've restarted so many of the activities of the church. Not all, but many. We're moving forward. The COVID rates are declining. The summer is here. I was then going to say the time is right for dancing in the streets, uh, but we won't, that's a, that's a song. Um, but, you know, we're in this new era, I think, aren't we? Let us go forward together. Let us move forward together. Let us pray for God to add to our number through conversions and through God calling people to this corner of his vineyard. Come with us and we will do you good. Second group of people uh, who might be here or might be listening to this or watching this on YouTube are those that maybe are being called to reevaluate what membership means to them. Maybe God is calling you to recommit to him or to the church. The third group of people who I know are here and are listening to this, watching this, are you faithful members? But I want you to know how much I appreciate you all. Your support, your prayers, your godliness, your kindness, for all you do to serve the Lord and this church. It is very much appreciated. There is no levels of service in the church. The person that cleans the toilet and serves the tea is the same person, is the same level, if you want, as somebody standing up the front like this, or somebody who officially holds office. All these things are valuable. All of these things are valuable to God. And so, what uh, can I say? about membership. I can say that your voice is important. Your contribution is important. And I've demonstrated this morning, I think the church membership does matter. The church membership can be for you. And so, dear friends, let us pray. Let us pray for an increase in our attendance because we have more room for people. Let us pray for an increase 
in our membership. Let us link arms and work together and pray together for the Kingdom of God in this season of COVID recovery. New faithful members, let us encourage those of the two groups that I have mentioned. Those who may, God may be calling to recommit in membership or to join in membership with us. Billy Graham said this, Christians are like coals in a fire. When they cling together, they keep the flame burning brightly. When they separate, they die out. We need each other. Our spiritual life is not an individual thing. We need each other. We need the church. We need to cling together for the flame to burn brightly. Amen. We're going to have a couple of worship songs to end on the subject, largely that which I've been speaking about, about the Christian church. Build your kingdom here, the Wren's Collective one, and then a good get getting hymn, Come People of the Risen King, and then we'll close in prayer. <coughs>
God, pour out your spirit upon your people, we ask. And give us a new vision of your glory, a new consecration to your service, a new sense of your presence, a new love for you and for one another. And now may glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.